There was a huge evolution in how games were being covered by content creators. And this started when Xbox bent the knee to PlayStation and recently decided to expand the games they publish on their platforms. Since then, Xbox creators have converted from happiness around what Xbox was bringing down the pike to pure hate for PlayStation. This has translated to the most minuscule things they focus on in relation to now the PlayStation 5 Pro. It's being suggested that the platform is not selling well, only a few days since pre-orders have launched. But can you make this determination this early? Only one way to find out. And here at MM2K Gaming, we do that through a deep dive. So could there be answers in within two polar opposite views here on the social media sphere in regards to this? We'll, we'll let you know. We talk about all this in the next installment of The Spiel, our gaming hot topic video series. Buckle up and get ready for a good one. Let's go. Yeah. What's up people, it's your boy MM2K of our not digital culture. Cloud Dostin here, MM2K Gaming, back again with another episode of The Spill. This one is called the PlayStation 5 pre-order success now being questioned. But before we get into this one, do us a huge favor, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and rock those bells for notifications, please, so you know when we're dropping these doses. Okay. This is a very interesting one, one I'm going to have fun with. Um, and hopefully we can do it in shorter order than normal. You guys know my stuff is not scripted, so we don't know how long we're going to be here, but I think we can make our point in shorter order. All right. So first let, let's talk about what's going on here. What, what started this conversation in order for me to do that. I got to go here. This is a rather lengthy tweet from Destin Legary of IGN. Um, Destin has been one of the more interesting content creators who started off last gen as an xbox guy but who glorified playstation right then this generation he hated on playstation and seemingly became an xbox guy again but a lot of his takes were over the top as far as how he thought or how he exclaimed that xbox would beat playstation this generation when none of the evidence proved that even though he's at the world's largest video game site out there and that exposes him to a lot of connections a lot of behind the scenes stuff but regardless of what he is connected to behind the scenes when he knows publicly he still came up with that off the wall analysis and now it's kind of like going back to where else is he gonna go his back's up against the wall he's going to criticize an xbox as he should have done earlier but now lumping everything together to make his previous analysis not look so bad. It's not that just Xbox is doing bad. PlayStation is doing horrible too. And the console generation has been lost. We, we've, we've seen a video like this um, from Cold Eastwood recently where instead of isolating and focusing on how Xbox completely crapped the bed and didn't deliver for its consumers, we now want to somehow blur the lines and, and put PlayStation in that mix even though the playstation um is selling like bonkers um a bunch of games are being sold on there when you look at um circana slash npd that covers the largest region for playstation and xbox which is north america you constantly see that every single game on that top 20 year to date list can be purchased in one place and that's the playstation 5 store of playstation 5 marketplace you can't go to an, another singular store in gaming and get all those games that are in those top 20 lists except for PlayStation 5 Marketplace. All the signs are there about the success of the PlayStation 5. Is everything perfect? Absolutely not. But the success of the PlayStation 5 versus the collapse of Xbox, <laughs> you, you, there couldn't be more staunch polar opposites here. But again this is Destin trying to be savvy in a nefarious way and, and, and make um, uh, parallels where they don't exist okay all right that's that, that's enough with my praise of Destin let's read what he has to say in short 
He says the PlayStation 5 Pro not selling out in seconds is such a different feeling from 2020 when literally no console could be found for like a year. Even the PlayStation 4 Pro was hard to get after launch if I remember right. And to be clear, I'm not knocking the PlayStation 5 Pro here. I'm just saying it's clear that spending habits have changed. Okay. So here's the problem with that. Um, in theory. Number one, the PlayStation 5 Pro is a niche product. It's only meant to serve about 15 to 20% of the PlayStation current user base because it's a mid-gen refresh. That's what all mid-gen refreshes, right? But trying to compare how PlayStation 5s weren't available at launch to this is asinine. Why is it? Because the PlayStation 5 Pro had a supply restraint. Microchips couldn't be produced fast enough to meet demand. No, no, no chip, no console. You don't have that same scenario here. And in actuality, we're talking about pre-orders. We're not talking about physical consoles yet. So I think Destin is speaking out of turn. I, I as much as I poke fun at him a few moments ago i do understand this fixation on oh pre-order slots are not sold out oh man this thing isn't moving well i understand that but i'm we're gonna break that down but here's another take on the predetermination of how successful this was this is coming from nib nib says the playstation 5 pro gnawing the 30 anniversary is already sold out in numerous countries despite nobody wanting it Truth marketing from PlayStation likely brought many to the store of anniversary hype exposure who may have otherwise not done so and bought a regular PlayStation 5 Pro instead. Um, in response to that, and uh, well, let me do this. I do want to do this. He does show various countries where it's sold out. All right. Now, in these countries where he's showing where they pre-order slots, not consoles, pre-order slots sold out pre-order slots may have reopened we're going to explain that but initially they pre-order pre -order slots closed and then they reopened that's the best way to look at it not necessarily sold out or you know there's no more consoles left it's pre-order slots that are being claimed here not a physical console yet so with that said, what is my theory on all this? Okay. As a precursor of 25 plus years in Fortune 500 experience, this is kind of within my realm because even though I'm no longer in a management role, I moved to special projects. This is what I do. I follow demographics and trends and I look at the financial movements of said stuff. And it's my job to predetermine how things are moving so certain business plans can be executed okay um so demographic trends are my thing um it's important to know before we get into this that pre-orders are not tied to a physical console it's a numbers game okay so here's what you likely have going on here because like i said we have a situation where even in the United States, pre-order slots were unavailable, meaning that the slots that were already allotted were gone. And then all of a sudden they came back. People think that was a glitch. That's not a glitch. Here's what's likely happening here. Based upon my experience, movement of devices, pre-orders, things like, and just common sense things that I know about pre-orders when it even comes to gaming. Again, pre-orders are not tied to a physical console. It's a numbers game. You likely have Sony playing with allotments for retail versus PlayStation Direct, okay? Now the optics on that may not be good. Hey, typically you would think like a Nintendo, you would want something to quote unquote sell out somewhere because that creates FOMO for the next time you release a batch. But you gotta understand the situation that Sony's in right now. Even though the optics may not be good, there's a reason that they're likely playing with these allotments, and that's what you're seeing here. First and foremost, the yen is doing horrific in Japan. 
I'm not going to get into all that. It's a whole nother video, probably for a whole nother channel. But just understand that the Bank of Japan has done some measures that have sent ripples globally that has caused heartache globally, right? And have pretty much devalued the yen right now. Um, and Sony has become one of the biggest victims of this. So the yen has weakened and that messes with Sony's ability to th sell things globally, convert money over to their domestic currency, which is the yen. It just messes up a lot of things as far as um, PlayStation or Sony's uh, fluidity monetarily, okay? So that affects their margins. Their, um, their margins determine how attractive they are for investors. So that's, that's a big deal. So now they're in a state to where they're trying to protect slash increase margins. What does that got to do with PlayStation 5 pre-orders? Well, again, you're not claiming an actual console at this moment. You are claiming a pre-order slot that will then later turn into a console. Meaning, this is all about numbers. So PlayStation went to its manufacturers and its jobbers and said, okay, and negotiated how many consoles they want created, right? So they said, we got, let's just say, for instance, they said, we want a million PlayStation 5 Pros created in this first batch. And let's just say they originally said, okay, we plan to sell 300,000 on our site and the other 700,000 we're going to send to retailers. Say everybody gets on the website and those that 300,000 sells out within 10, 15 minutes is what we likely saw when the pre-order slot availability went down for, even in the States, it went down twice. It went down within the first hour and then later it went down around 2 p.m. Eastern and that day didn't come up again for another four hours. So when PlayStation seeing that, they probably said, hold on. Our stock of 300,000 went out immediately fast. Let's look at this allotment of the other 700,000 that we plan to send to retailers. And let's start taking some of those. Let's start shifting some of those onto PlayStation Direct. Why? Why would they do something like that? Because retailers are gonna have a lot of power in moving your stuff, more so than on PlayStation Direct, I believe. Here's why they did that. Again, I talked about yen and margins. Your margins are bigger when you sell it directly. That's why it's called PlayStation Direct. PlayStation pockets all that money versus to having to send it to a retailer, working with your manufacturer and your jobber who distributes your devices to these stores. The more devices you ship, the more you have to pay and on the delivery of those devices. So if I can move as many as that million without selling it retail, that's better for Sony. So that's what they're likely doing. And that's probably why PlayStation Direct orders, pre-orders went live first and orders and retailers aren't going live until what I think October 10th. There's a reason that they're staggered. So I think it's just a misunderstanding of how pre-orders work or how business works that is common, that's pandemic in the gaming community on why nobody understands that it's essentially too early. I'm not even siding with Nib here. Nib puts out some great evidence, but I, I think it's too early to predetermine success or failure. Why? Because even though PlayStation may be shifting numbers of allotments for retailers, that doesn't mean that once those consoles hit the retailers, they're gonna sell there. They might not sell there. And as things look, it looks like that extra allotment that may have been pushed over further to uh, PlayStation Direct, it may have slowed down. So you may say, Sony say, oh, we overestimated how many more we want to add to PlayStation Direct. Let's take 100,000 of those and then add it back to the retail allotment. So we don't know yet if pre-orders are moving properly. All we can, I think, argue is that all signs show at the moment that the pre-order sales on PlayStation Direct were higher than the original estimations. That's all we can say right now. So in closing, not selling out a niche product, I typically can reasonably be seen as a red flag, but there's huge incentive to risk the optics here for Sony. The true test is monitoring available units in retail. Once those hit retail, 
because if consoles sit on stores shelves and they never have to be replenished then you have something to talk about but in my opinion right now without word from sony it's simply too early to tell and i think the biggest suggestion we could make is that their original estimates on playstation direct did not meet the actual demand that's it we'll keep an eye on this one and either way it goes we'll report it to you um because i gotta be honest i'm one of the ones this is not me capping for this i'm actually one of the ones that said because playstation won't take a stranglehold of how this thing is being proven as worth it they're putting that in the hands of digital foundry that i don't think they they're going to hit 15 20 percent I don't think that they're in there they're gonna hit 15 20 percent until sony shows you the comparisons until sony shows you the deep dives until sony shows you the games once they do that then this thing could fly off of shelves long term but we'll see until then this is your boy mm2k let me know what you think about all this in the comment section below like always here's what i think but if you did like what i have to say check out the links below to follow me it will lead you again to or not digital culture cloud dosage mm2k gaming with that said peace have a wonderful gaming day